All right, Eric. So we are now into the round of eight for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Actually, NASCAR Sprint Cup, the Monster Energy <laughs> Series. Boy, I haven't said Sprint Cup in a while. Well, this is the last. This is the last year for that. Now it's just gonna be the NASCAR Cup Series moving forward. Really? So, uh, no more Monster Energy. No, no. NASCAR is gonna tier it. So I, Why they're is that? trying to work out. Well, I don't. I think the the writing on the wall is they can't find enough money for one company to sponsor it from. Like how it's been Winston Cup, Nextel, Sprint, Monster. Okay. They're not finding enough. So now they figured, well, what if we just section it off like the first, what, 11 races, maybe the Pepsi Cup oh, series. And that's then, really getting silly now. Come on. Yeah. So they're going to have multiple. I think Geico is going to be one of them. But yeah, you're going to see no. like four or five. Yeah. So it's going to be the NASCAR Cup series and probably presented by and then insert sponsor Talking here about pimping out your product I <laughs> that mean, is what they're doing come on <laughs> yeah I, so I, couldn't uh, you just be like the nfl and the M you, they want to be like all the big boys uh, don't you shouldn't even have a sponsor then no just be a big boy that's yeah it. so yep so we'll just be calling it the nascar cup series pretty yeah from, i uh, think that's what we're everybody that, that's what's gonna happen see they think yep. they're gonna uh, see if i'm a sponsor i'm not paying for it because nobody's no. gonna get used to Eight races or eleven races. It's just gonna be a waste of money. Yeah. Well by the time you do it, you're gonna have a new one coming in. Yeah. So yeah. I, I would hate to be the one in the middle where the races are like yeah, the summer true. stretch. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> I don't know if the Daytona five hundred and the last few playoff races and in between, like yeah. it's just the cup series. So yeah, so there's a there's a little tidbit for you. All right. So uh, happy for me to see that uh, I, I'm back up the top of the fantasy standings. Yeah, there you go. After back-to-back -back wins from my boys, Ryan Blaney and Denny Hamlin. How about Denny Hamlin? Remember we talked about it last week? Actually, I talked about it with CJ that Hamlin 18-1 to 1 as a sleeper pick. And, and I said on the air, I said, well, how could I not take him? In that spot, yeah. because Den what is Denny Hamlin? I don't care what kind of past experiences he's had at the track. It, it wasn't as bad as a few other tracks he's been at. This is the best year he's ever had. There's just, just no respect. Kyle Busch would never get 18 to one anywhere. No. Yeah. It's they still they they finally gave him respect this week, putting him at a four to one on the race weekend odds and futures. But it's like man, it took you 32 weeks to figure this out. I mean, yeah, we looked at the beginning uh, that we you sent out yesterday that he was 25 to one. Yes, or twenty-two to one. And we all had him as off. our sleeper. Yeah, why not? I mean, he was listed with uh, Kurt Busch and Eric Almarola. It's like, man, what they did him a disservice, and here he is, left standing. And yeah, it, it's you could throw out a lot of past stats at these tracks, uh, other than that they ran earlier this year because this package. And he's shown he's been right there every week. So the fact that they had him at those odds, it's not shocking that it was easy pick for you. Well, let's uh, take a look at the standings now. we got eight more drivers left, and Kyle is back at the top of the standings. He's actually my top pick. I had the second pick. You had the first pick, so you went with uh, Denny Hamlin. So we, we, you and I took the top two drivers, which is not too much of a surprise. And I went with ha Kyle because I really figured that that third-place finish last week was potentially the beginning of Kyle getting ready for the stretch run, and I'm back. Uh, now, we'll see, because this is a track that if he doesn't do well, then I think we've got some issues, and we, we could say, well, maybe that the, the mar maybe the, 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 uh, the, the result last week was just one of those weeks. But I think I expect Kyle to have a very strong showing this week, and if he wins, he probably automatically goes right up to the top once again as the favorite to beat championship wise yeah yeah he and he's had a few rough races but yeah i, I even wrote that last week that if kyle kansas has statistically typically been a good track for him I, granted the 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 may race he didn't finish well i believe it was 30th but prior to that i think it was like eight straight top 10 finishes and like five of them were in the top five so last week was telling if he could contend and he did he had a good car i mean he had a fast car there in the end he nearly got there to the lead to hamlin before that caution came out for uh on the back stretch there, but or, uh, for Ham or not Hamlin, Blaney, get my drivers confused. Uh, but he was there, so I'll be curious to what he can do this weekend. He's been good at Martinsville. I mean, he was third in the playoff race there last year. Or, or I'm sorry, fourth, third in the spring, second in the play or the spring race last year. Won the playoff race a couple years ago. Second, the spring race that year. So you see, he's got a bunch of top 
two, three, fours. And since 2015, he hasn't finished worse than fifth. So eight straight this will top fives. Telling. Eight straight yeah. top fives with two runner ups and two wins and almost a thousand laps led during that time. And this will be a good key to see what he can do. Because, uh, like you said, if he struggles, then I think you get the old Kyle Bush that presses too hard for Texas and, and Phoenix. But if he comes out, not necessarily wins, but gets a, a top five, he's plus 18 right now. That could further. Uh, move him ahead to, what, 25, 30 points to the good? Because we know even if we have three different playoff drivers win this round, and none of them be Kyle Busch or anybody else, that one is moving on to Homestead as a on points. And right now, Kyle leads the points. So if he could just stay there, he can make it there on points. He's got some good tracks this round. So we'll see what he could do. This Last week could have been the start for a championship push for him. All right, well... Uh... What about those tracks coming up for Kyle? Again, it's Martinsville, Texas, and Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So what kind of a history does he have at those three tracks that would lead us to believe that he will make Homestead with a chance to win the championship or not? Uh, well, we just talked about Martinsville. I think he should be there uh, at the end as long as he stays out of trouble. Uh, Texas, he's got eight top fives in his last 13 finishes there. Granted, he was 10th again uh, back in the spring race, but it seems like Gibbs in the spring race – they're good there. Not so much in the playoff race. We'll see what happens. He was 17th in the playoff race last year. So uh, we'll see. Okay. The, the last three finishes, or actually last four, were 13th, 19th, first, or five. 13th, 19th, first, 17th, 10th. So that could be sure. iffy. But we know how good he is on mile and a half. So we'll okay. see what happens there. And then Phoenix, it's... Arguably, just like uh, Martinsville, he won the uh, spring race. He won the playoff race last year, and he finished second in the spring race last year as well. Uh, if you want to go back for the last few years, he was fourth, fourth, second, third, seventh, second, first, first. So that's a top seven machine. Uh, a lot of top fours there, a couple wins, a couple runner-ups. So I think the the bookends yep. of this round, the first and Looking last pretty race, good. He should be solid. It's just the the middle okay. one at Texas, but uh, it's Kyle. He could win anywhere, but he hasn't won. That's since true. Second. That's, that's the right. key. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But that's why I said this weekend's key for him, because say he has a fluke, a cut tire, somebody spins him, a pit penalty. He's not in the top five like he's used to at Martinsville. If he's pressing at Texas, and as I just said, his stats of his last five starts there he's got one top five and that was a win everything else has been 10th or worse he could be in some trouble going okay. into phoenix but again phoenix he's strong at he could also win that race to go to homestead off a win so i'm not too worried about kyle yet he's leading the, the standings for a reason uh because of the playoff points which is a totally different subject if we have time we can talk about it later but uh, right now, I think he's. All right, he's in a good Rex spot. is in second, and he's only had one poor result during the playoffs, and that was the potluck race of Talladega. So Truex is looking pretty strong. He led off the playoffs with those two wins. And what about Truex at these three tracks? Because uh, if you, if we, just looking at this track, of course, he's never won at Martinsville. He was eighth in March. But he does have seven top tens in his last nine with three top fives runner-up. And 261 laps of the 262 that he's led all time have come in his last nine races. He's 6-1 to one to win this race. So he's been pretty good here, even though he's never won. What about the other two tracks? Yeah, uh, yeah. starting this weekend, he should be good. He was second a couple years ago in the playoff race. He was third last year, if we remember right. That's the whole him and Joey Logano incident on the last lap that he was leading. So we know he could be there at Martinsville, Texas. Surprisingly, he's never won really? at, since as good as he is on mile So he's never tracks. won yeah. at these next he two finished. tracks. No, no. And so that, that could be a little okay. worrisome. Yes, he's only four points behind Kyle for that top spot. But if Kyle doesn't win and he can't get around Kyle nor win at any of these tracks, and actually I should throw out, he hasn't won at Phoenix either. Really? He's never won at any of these three tracks this round. So, so he might have to get uh, in points. That could be a little more. Could. Yes. Yeah. So he's going to have an interesting, but say Kyle doesn't win. Now you've got those two battling for the point spot. And right now there's four points separating them. So stage points are going to be key this round. Um, but if, in terms of just true X, he finished 12th at Texas in the spring race. He was ninth in the playoff race last year, 37th in the spring race the year before. Uh, but then he was second in the playoff race in 2017. So 
he's capable, but like Kyle, his finishes haven't been the greatest at Texas lately. And then you go to uh, Phoenix. He was second in the spring. He was fifth in the spring the year before. Uh, he was good there last year in the playoff race, but he's only uh, third in the fall of 2016. But that's about it as far as top fives go for him. He hasn't really been that good there statistically uh, since he's been a cup okay. driver. So he's going to have a – I'm a little more worried about him than Kyle, which sounds weird because he's won twice in the playoffs. But Kyle's got a couple good tracks this round. Uh, Retrix has never won. So uh, it, it's – but Truex is driving better right now. So it's kind of which side of the coin do you want to be on. But, okay. uh, yeah, he hasn't won any of these tracks. That's that's going to be but a factor look, too. But, they're – we're talking still about being at least in this time they're 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 in a good spot points wise that if they just continue to perform well top fives top tens no reason to think that they can't get in without a win lots going to depend on whether or not a couple other drivers of course uh, find ways to win the next two races that are playoff drivers, but we'll see. There's still going to be two spots left open no matter what, or potentially one spot if three drivers separately win that are in the playoffs over these next three races. Let's go to Denny Hamlin, and Hamlin is right there. He's, he's, he's on the heels of Truex and Kyle in third place. He's trending at the perfect time. His confidence is through the roof. He just won at a track where he was 18 to 1 because nobody thought he'd win. And really, there was no, he, he was, we knew he would be some sort of a sleeper. Uh, the odds were out of whack, but still, it was very, very, it was surprising that he was able to pull up the win and dominate towards the end of that race the way that he did. I don't know in any of those last restarts when Elliott was getting close. A few other drivers, like Kyle, had gotten close before as well to passing him. But I'm telling you, I don't know if even Chase would have been able to pass him. Uh, he was just so strong, yeah, Denny. He yeah. just was not letting anybody get by him. No, and you got to keep in mind, too, he only had two yes, tires yes, on that Yes, yes, and Elliott had four. Uh, they all had four. Yeah, yes. so did Kyle. And he still kept him at bay. So that tells you how strong of a car he has. And he's got four top five finishes his last five starts on the season. So he's hot. You look at Martinsville this weekend. He finished fifth back in the spring. He was second in this race last year. And if you look at just his playoff races at Martinsville, third, third, seventh, and second over uh, the last four races. So he's going to be there. We know he's going to be there. Gibbs, uh, they were one, three, four, five in the spring race. So I, I, that would be definitely one that you know they're going to be good. I would sway him towards a winner this weekend. He's just that good there. He's from Virginia. He Richmond, he says, is kind of his home track, but Martinsville is kind of the, the benefactor. Like, hey, hey we're here four, twice a year, too, four times in Virginia. Let's count that as well. So he, there's a lot of importance for him at Martinsville. So I like his chances this weekend. And then you look at Texas. He won the race in the spring. Uh, he led 45 laps, uh, but he was 30th in the playoff race last year, 34th in the spring race last year, but he was third in the playoff race the year before that. So Texas is kind of one of those up and down tracks for him, but you look at what he just did at Kansas uh, for a track similar, mile and a half as well, and he won. So I wouldn't count him out at Texas. And then Phoenix is just one of those tracks he's just – okay yeah he's got six top tens in his last eight he was fifth back in the spring so he could be there as a factor as well so this is shaping up to be a good round for him he's plus nine and as far as the playoff bubble he's third jgr has one two three in the standings right now granted points other than getting the driver into homestead uh matters but once you get to homestead obviously we don't rely on points anymore so uh we'll just look at where he's at in terms of that playoff bubble but i also want to look at where he's at in terms of the, the lead, because at this point, you want to be as close to the top driver in the points as you can, and he's only nine points behind Kyle Busch, and we just talked about how Texas isn't necessarily a great track for Kyle. So if Hamlin can score some good stage points, finish the top fives, he can easily get back okay. up there uh, and lead the oh, standing. Yeah. So I feel good about All right. chances. And Logano is next. He is in fourth. He doesn't have a top five in the playoffs. Matter of fact, he only has one top five since Chicago. That is just unreal to think about, but 
look, he was Logano was very fortunate to get into the playoffs. Not only does he squeak into the playoffs, but he's in fourth place. So it is the way that it is, and that's the way it should be because it, you go by the points of the entire season. But still, things have not gone particularly well for Joey Logano over the past several months. I don't see how this changes. How how are the tracks for him uh, once uh, you get past uh, Martinsville? Because Martinsville's been pretty good for Joey. He's got seven top tens in his last 11, five of those top fives. He's the defending champ of this race. Matter of fact, the, the combination of Kozlowski Logano have dominated the last two races at Martinsville by leading 755 of 1,000 possible laps. Joey led 309 in this race last year, but he was 19th in March, uh, so that might be a little bit of a concern. He does have uh, 13 straight top 10 starts here, which is impressive, including five poles. So what about Logano here and the next two races for his chances to move on? I like him here because it's not a track that is like aero or speed dependent. Um, as you said, he's started top 10 like for years. I mean, he's, he's going to be there. And this is a track that I feel, and unfortunately we saw Dover and a lot of these smaller tracks, Richmond is kind of thrown to that, that it's tough to pass. Martinsville is tough to pass in the spring. Brad Keselowski, his teammate for Crown Atlanta, led 446 a 500 lap. So starting up front's a good factor for him, but he worries me. He's got one top five, his last Crazy. 15 races, nine of his last, nine of his last 12 races. He's finished outside the top 10, but the only reason uh, he's here right now, state or uh, playoff points. He keeps carrying them on. He's scoring a lot of stage points. He scored 32 stage points over the final two races of the last round. You take those away. He's not advancing even with the playoff points, but you, can, you combine that and carrying playoff points forward with him. That's why he is where he is. But this round, I mean, you've got – I have for him, I feel like he's got to win this round. He's only plus two on the bubble. And with one top five in his last 15, he just doesn't show the knack to get back to victory lane. Granted, he won this race last year. He was sixth in the spring race uh, last year as well. But I just think a good top ten is all he needs, or even a top five – just to end this drought of yeah, he's one in the last 15 races. Going. Absolutely. That's, yeah. That, and then that will build to a good track for him at Texas. He, granted, again, he was 17th in the spring, but the Penske guys were fast early on in that race at Texas. They just had problems throughout the race. So uh, I, I don't put a whole lot of stock in that 17th place finish. I think his car was better than that. Uh, he was third in the playoff race last year, sixth in the spring race. He's got six top seven finishes in his last seven Texas starts. So he could be there, but does that one top five in the last 15 kind of cloud hang over him? Does that become one top five in the last 16 going into that weekend? So uh, odds set are that he could run good there, but the past this past season shows that it hasn't been yeah. very well lately. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, Phoenix is not typically a strong track for him. He was 10th. In the spring race, 37th in the playoff race last year. Granted, he won in that race. He already won at Martinsville, so it really didn't matter what he did. Uh, but 19th in the spring race uh, last year. And if you go back to his win in uh, 2015 on the playoff race, he hasn't finished in the top five since at Phoenix. So this could be a worrisome round for him, only the fact that Phoenix isn't a good track. We know he doesn't have a good recent history. Like I said, one top five in his last 15. That's a key stat for him. If he gets in a hole and he has to go to Phoenix and win, it doesn't look like a favorable track for him to do so. So I look at the defending uh, series champion to be in a little bit of trouble to, uh, yeah, over the these bottom next three line weeks. Is, is what you said. It, it, it's how he's racing coming in now, and mm -hmm. it's just not there. And uh, can it change? No. Of course it can. He, he's a champion. He's the defending champ. But – the odds are not with him, so he needs. Look, he's been he's the defending champ at a race dominating last year. So show some signs that you can have another strong showing. If he doesn't, he's in big trouble. Yes. yes. All right. H Harvick yeah. is next, and Kevin is. It's kind of just he's been okay. Uh, if you take a look at Kevin Harvick's results over the past few months, he's been he's been pretty decent. It's just that, yeah. It's just that he hasn't. 
get back to the fact that he's not leading enough laps. He's, he's, he just doesn't look like – it really hasn't looked all year like a, like a dominant driver like, like we've seen in the past, even though he had uh, th- that stretch of three wins not too recently, just before the playoffs. He has four straight top tens here, sixth in March, uh, but just uh, five top fives and one win at Martinsville in 36 career races. So I'm not, that's why he's 12 to one. He's a sleeper in our minds yeah. for this race. Uh, what do you think about whether it's this track or the next two tracks for Kevin Harvick? Because we know historically Phoenix has been pretty good, pretty good for him. Yeah. yeah. He just needs to get by this weekend. It, it, he just, he needs to build more momentum. I, I just feel like uh, the beginning of the year, he just looked like they were missing something. And then we got to the late summer stretch and it looks like they found something and maybe that looked to be a more of an anomaly because now they look just all right. I mean, they're top 10 car, but the, they don't look like they have the speed to really contend each week again. And it looks like they're just missing something. Martinsville, as you said, has never been a good track for him. He's just been, again, okay, just kind of like he's been yeah. on the season lately. The so I 10. think just a solid, yeah, just the top 10. Uh, but Texas, that's a different story. He's uh, He's been good at Texas. He's got three top two finishes in his last four starts. He's won the last two uh, playoff races at Texas, so uh, we know he's going to be strong. He was eighth uh, in the spring race, but I will say it seems like they found more speed since the spring race. It just feels like they're just missing just something else. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a setup, but um, three top two finishes. He knows how to get around there. Uh, I, I'd look for him to three-peat, three in a row there uh, next weekend uh, to move on, but if not, Phoenix, we've seen what he can do there. I mean, he's just He's the king of the desert. Granted, Kyle has kind of joined him in the in the court ruling, but yeah, he's he's right there. He could win Phoenix at any given time. So uh, he's got the top stats out of anybody at Phoenix. I would look for him if he needs to win at Phoenix. We've seen him do it in the past. He's got the win. I think he'll be there uh, the close of the round. So I feel good about him. He's only two points behind Joey Logano right now for that final spot. If uh, for the if we get four. Uh, are the four drivers that move on, if we get a non-playoff yeah. winner, somehow uh, somebody s- steals a win, then I feel yeah. good about him mm-hmm. points over, in his Over lane. Logano. I don't yeah, feel over good Logano. about sure. Yeah. Over Logano, yeah. I don't know if I feel good about him points in his way past no. the three no. Gibbs cars, unless Kyle has, again, a rough re- week this week and next week, then I feel good about him maybe getting by Kyle, but not so much uh, Hamlin. All right, and then we go to three young drivers that are trying to break into the big boys, Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, Ryan Blaney. Uh, Elliott just barely surviving. It did not look good for Chase Elliott after that late caution. Kozlowski, just by pitting, was all of a sudden from out to in, and you figured, well, he we just pit. He has new tires. It's over. I mean, how is he not going to go forward and hold on unless Chase Elliott wins the race? And I got to tell you right now, the broadcast team, uh, whoever it is, the, the guy who does the play. The, the, oh, Rick yeah, oh, Rick Allen. What, what yeah. I would have done in that circumstance. And again, this goes back to proper producing of the show. If if you feel uncomfortable about calling not only the race as you see it, but also trying to understand the playoff positioning, then you have to have an assistant that is basically helping you with this, whether it's through your ear Mm -hmm. or with some paper that he just passes to you to let you know what's going on. Because he never mentioned that Chase Elliott went from back to up in, 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 during those during that overtime last you know lap, we could see it. It's not like we needed him to tell us, but he completely just forgot about it until the race was over. And then he then you know what he was doing was was looking at the points himself and going, "Oh, Chase Elliott is is ahead of Kozlowski." That you have to they have to do a better job of that. But that was just a really bad job yeah. uh, of of understanding the moment. But great way because everybody um, the fans want to chase Elliott and they didn't want Brett Keselowski and yeah. so all things considered it was it was it was it was satisfying that the right driver got in based on how that race ended with Chase Elliott nearly winning the race and and Keselowski having nothing in that car 
Yeah, Kozlowski just tried his best. It just There wasn't anything there. And that's what concerns me about the Penske cars a little bit because they just, other than Blaney, and and we'll talk about him in a minute, but him and uh, Kozlowski and Logano just appeared not to have a whole lot. And the right guy, as you said, Chase had speed. He found it in the end. And, and I, yeah, I wish they would have sold the story a little bit more that, yeah, Kozlowski had new tires. Uh, Logano was involved in that wreck. It's going to be between those two and Elliott for that final couple spots. But then... Kozlowski dropped like an anchor, and there Elliott was, and yeah, it's it was fitting. I mean, Elliott won the Roval, and then he finished second uh, at Kansas. Both just crazy races to get by. Does this round, does he find a way to get to the championship four? Because this is the third straight year he's been in this round, which is remarkable, uh, since he's the only Hendrick guy that can say that. But uh, and he's got some good tracks. And this, in this is round this two. is a good this is a good uh, track been, right here. You would think with the momentum yes. from last week, if he cannot capitalize with a real strong top five, potentially winning race this week, he's in trouble. Yeah, because he, yeah, he finished second uh, in the spring race. He was seventh in the playoff race last year. 27th in the playoff race the year before, but that's only because Hamlin uh, got into him and wrecked him while leading late in that race. And that I couldn't help, but I don't, and that's the other thing I wish NBC would have brought up this last weekend is my mind. And again, I got a weird twisted mind, but I was thinking, Ooh, why don't go back to Martinsville a few years ago when Elliot was behind Hamlin or uh, Hamlin's behind Elliot and wrecked him purposely out of the way to uh, try to win that race. And here it is, end of this race. They're You're trying right. to sell the point that Kozlowski and here Elliot was starting right behind yeah. Hamlin. What would have stopped Elliot from getting payback sure. right then? And they never mentioned like, it. Like, hey, I need yep. to win they to get on. Yep. They never said a word. It was in my head, but they never said it. So I, I that that was an interesting tidbit I thought they left out. But if there was a track he's going to win it. at, yep. this is a good one. Yep. Uh, Texas isn't bad for him. Granted, he finished 13th in the spring race. Not a whole lot. Uh, uh, seems like spring races translate to the fall race. I don't know why. Uh, he was sixth in the uh, the playoff race there last year. Uh, if you go back before that, 11th, 8th, 9th, 4th, 5th, those are his results in the Cup Series of Texas. So he's just been okay. A good top 10 car. But right now, being six points below the cutoff line, um, if he doesn't win Martinsville, you can't just be okay at Texas because that will really force him to a likely must-win at Phoenix. Uh, he's been all right there. He's 14th in the spring race, 23rd in the playoff race last year, but he was third in the spring race last year as well and second in the playoff race the year before that. So he's capable of winning there. But for a guy that's only got a handful, I mean, what, six career wins, do you really want to force him to a must-win no. um, no. in that final race? But, again, we, we look at what he's done the last two. Uh, we call him Cardiac Chase. You never know. Uh, Barely skated by the last two rounds. Maybe you that's his know. calling. Uh, yeah. and this is the year. But, yeah, he's, he's in a little bit of trouble because I don't think he's going to catch those Gibbs guys on points. So he's got to get a win at some point to – or hope that a non-playoff driver wins and we get a multiple uh, spots to, uh, to Homestead available on points. Other than that, I think he's going to have to win. This weekend's his prime chance I could so. actually – I have no problem seeing him – Pass Harvick or and Logano for points. I got no problem. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I think that can happen. Yeah, it's just those other three. I don't know. Kyle is too far ahead in my mind. Oh yeah, just he's not catching there. those guys. But yeah, but he can catch no, the next two. But the first I, two. Yeah. If we would go just four drivers on points, I would say yes, he's right there. I think he, he could can do, do it after it, this week. It, that, that's that. That's why this yeah. is so important. That if he does not win this week, yep. he needs to be in fourth place after this week. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That that he need. Yeah, he needs to get on the good side. And honestly, if there's like he needs the hope for like a Keselowski, somebody that's out but is good at Martinsville, kind of steals a win this weekend. Then that'll leave at least two wild card spots. Unfortunately, there's not many of and those guys can... that uh, we feel confident in doing that no. this week. And there's a reason the the playoff guys keep winning playoff yeah. races. The guys the get cars, away. Sure. I mean, you look at Martinsville this race since 2015. A playoff driver's won every year. So I I, I have a feeling we're going to have a playoff driver win anyways. It's it, there's a reason the playoff drivers are still in the playoffs. We'll All say right, that. Larson is next and boy this is not a good track for kyle larson and he does not come in to this uh, next round in 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 any way shape or form uh feeling pretty good about himself uh, 
last week was just a 14th and did, of course, a bad week at Talladega. He only has one top 10 in 11 races at Martinsville. That was a third in 2016. He's only led 29 laps total. He's crashed a couple of times. He's had engine problems a couple of times. He was 18th in March. I still think 40 to 1 is a little bit high. He should be, I would probably put him at least next to Boyer at 25 to 1. Boyer's done better here, but Larson is just a better driver right now than Boyer. Uh, but still, it's going to be, if he, this is a race that I think Kyle Larson would love to somehow get a top 10 and just move on. Yep. And he said that even after his Talladega victory, it seemed like or, uh, his victory at Dover because he's worried about Talladega, but he said he didn't have to worry about it anymore. His first thought was Martinsville, and it came for a reason. He said that I am worried about Martinsville. And as you said, at third in 2016, that's he hasn't had a top five since there. I mean, he's he was 18th in the, uh, the spring race. And he was 37th in the playoff he race had a last top year. 10 16th since in the then. He's only had one top no. 10 in 11 races there. His best finish is 14th since that third place run. So not a good track for him, but at 40 to one, it wouldn't hurt just to throw a little bit his way because never you know. Never know what happen last week. In Martinsville. Yep, he's yep, yep, he's a playoff driver. People race him differently, so if he can go off strategy, because let's face it, he's 19 points below the cutoff, and that doesn't count getting by some drivers to get into a spot if we get a fluke winner between now uh, and Phoenix. So. He can't really points race anymore. He's just got to swing for the fences and go for a win. And this just isn't his track. And next week isn't either. And you look at his stats at uh, uh, Texas. He's got three top fives and 12 starts. Uh, he's got six finishes of 23rd or worse. He finished last in the spring race. Uh, so Texas isn't a good track for Phoenix. him either. Um, Phoenix is decent. He, he was sixth in the spring. He was third in the playoff race last year. Uh, he was third in the playoff race a few years ago, second in the spring race two years ago. He's there. He's never won there, obviously. But you look at Phoenix as a mile track. Dover was a mile track. Granted, Phoenix isn't banked. But uh, I think if, if any track he's going to win this round, it's going to be okay. Phoenix. Um, but it's going to be hard to beat a Kevin Harvick or Kyle Busch at That's Phoenix true. as well. Um, so he's in a little bit of trouble just in terms of where he's at in the standings and these next two tracks for him are statistically not one of his better, uh, better places All to right. race and at. And uh, rounding it out is Ryan Blaney. And if it wasn't for bad luck, which has kind of bit Ryan uh, at a half a dozen times, especially earlier this season, uh, he would have had a good finish. He would have had a strong top 10, maybe even a top five last week. So he was the better of the Penske drivers by far. He just had bad luck. Uh, so yeah. I, and that's coming off the win at Talladega. So I think there's a lot, and I got to tell you, I know we didn't have, we didn't talk about it, but w w w how he grew up with that win at Talladega, that was some mm -hmm. ballsy driving to find a way to get by Ryan Newman. That was ballsy. That was expert driving. That was talent. And the, the difference is, are you mature enough to do it? Can you pull that kind of win off? A lot of drivers we've seen for years can't figure out how to do that, whether it's talent or guts or what. But Blaney found a way to beat Ryan Newman at Talladega, and that seemed to carry over last week. So his confidence has got to be pretty strong right now. Even though he's in eighth place, I completely disregard that. I think he's in a good yep. spot. Uh, you're, you've got him as your top sleeper. I'll talk to CJ about it when we do our show tomorrow to see where he would have put Blaney as his top sleeper because he's, he would have been my top sleeper. He's got three top tens in his last four races here. He was fourth in March. He led 145 laps, finishing third in the race in 2018. So, yes, I think Ryan Blaney is primed to have another good result this week. And I think he's got a shot to get to Homestead. So what about the next two races, and what about Martinsville? Yeah, I agree with Blaney. I, I, I honestly think uh, if the Penske guy is going to make it to Homestead, it's him. Uh, he just seems to have found something. And like you said, Talladega, he got by Newman. Every, you pull the whole garage, they'll tell you the hardest driver to pass is Ryan Newman. And he did that at Talladega, almost going out of bounds, kind of being forced down against Newman, who hasn't won in over 90-plus oh, yeah. races, and he still got by after spinning. I mean, he That's overcame right. a spin the yeah. day before. 
And it's a spin and win. So he did it. And I think that gave him, as you said, the momentum. Last week, throw it out. Uh, granted, he, he cut a tire. He got into the wall. Uh, but they weren't running on uh, like a Kansas setup. They threw all that. That's why I was impressed he was even running the top five as long as he did. Uh, they were going for Texas and Homestead. If you remember right, he ran the high line almost lap oh, after yeah, lap sure. after lap. And that's what got him in trouble. But Homestead, that's what they're practicing for because they run. It's kind of like Darlington. You run up higher on the track. So they threw, since they knew they were going uh, to the round of eight anyways, they threw everything out and said, let's prepare for Homestead. Let's prepare if we get there. Let's throw some uh, Texas stuff on there. Let's prepare for the future. And he still ran well. So that bodes well. And I wouldn't be shocked if he won this weekend. As you said, he was finished fourth in the spring race. And Penske was right there. I mean, they we saw what uh, Kozlowski did, and we saw how good Logano typically is there. Blaney's right there. He's on the cusp. As you said, he finished third uh, in the spring race a couple of years ago and led 145 laps. So Martinsville, I, I think he can get a solid top five, if not a win. Wouldn't be shocked. Then you go to Texas. Granted, he finished 37th in the spring race, but he led 45 laps. I think his engine, if I'm not mistaken, something went awry on him. While, while he was leading. So I would not be shocked if uh, Blaney could go into Texas and win because if you look at the playoff race that he ran at Texas last year, he finished second. He finished fifth. Actually, three of his last four Texas starts, he's finished That's in the good. top six. So he's and, he, and we saw what he could do there in the spring race before the engine. So he could win in either the next two weeks. Phoenix is not a good track for him. He's got one top five finish. But that was in the, that uh, was in seven the spring. starts. So yep, third, yeah, though. Yep, he'll third take that again, race, potentially. So. That might be yep, what he needs. It, yeah. Exactly. It, it, he's a guy, unfortunately, uh, and I wrote about this last week, about how Larson and Blaney, uh, they needed to go for playoff points because of this reason. You look at their 19 and 21 points, respectively, behind the cutoff lines because you carry the playoff points. So that's the only thing that matters to start around, and they just didn't have them. So unfortunately, they're in a huge hole um, but Blaney could win. I would not be shocked if he won any of these races uh, to get the champ or get to the championship for Homestead by virtue of doing so. Uh, he's got a car to do it, and I think it would be fitting if maybe you have like a Chase Elliott win this weekend and a Ryan <laughs> Blaney next weekend, and you could have two drivers on the yeah. bottom half of these uh, standings get a win, which would put a lot of pressure on those guys on the top half. At well, look, that, that's Phoenix. what NASCAR so, uh, wants anyway. They want the young drivers that have marketing appeal yeah. to win these races, no doubt. Yeah. That'd be huge for them. Yeah, that would get you an Elliott and a Blaney to, champion, to the championship for Homestead. Chance. That's and, it. And you, for one of yeah, them to win. And, and then you'd have, and think of the ratings for Phoenix with, you got a race uh, where you got five more drivers that are going to be uh, vying, or no, four more drivers uh, going for those spots. And three of them would be Joe Gibbs Racing. You're going to have Kevin Harvick. It's going to be right there. Like, those are the four main drivers going for that spot. Oh, and though you want to throw a fifth guy in there, the defending champion, Joey Logano. And they're all going to go for a couple spots to Homestead. So I think that would be an interesting scenario. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but it very well could just because uh, based off stats on these tracks right, coming so up. So what? give me your uh, – I'll give you my pick first for the final four. Okay. I'm going to be pretty simple. I'm going to go with the top three. I'm going to go Kyle, Truex, and Hamlin, and then I'm going to – I'm putting Blaney in. So those are going to be my yeah. four to make Homestead. Uh, who are you going to go with? Well, I took it like this. I took uh, Denny Hamlin to win this weekend, uh, so he, okay. he'll be in. I took Harvick to Harvick. win next weekend just because okay. of his past stats at Texas. Okay. Texas. So there's two. And I went with Kyle Larson. Wow. Of Phoenix. And uh, I will, uh, I'll explain my reasoning between Hamlin and uh, okay. Larson here in a second. Uh, and then my fourth driver in, I went with Truex just because of points. Uh, it's going to be the top driver. And I think he's going to outrun Kyle this round. Granted, he's only four points behind him right now. Uh, I think he can make those up pretty quickly. So those are my four. Um, and the reason I went uh, so strong on Hamlin and Larson is we've had five straight years under this format since it started in 2014, the championship four. We've had five straight different winners by five straight different teams. So you had Harvick, Stuart Haas in 14. You had Kyle Busch and Joe Gibbs Racing in 15. You had Jimmy Johnson and Hendrick in 16. Truex with Furniture Row, who's no longer around in 17. Joey Logano and Penske last year. So you look at the guys in the playoffs. You got Gibbs, 
you got Hendrick, you got uh, Pinsky, you got Stuart Haas. Oh, and you got Ganassi. Ganassi hasn't won yet. So maybe they follow this trend. Plus, if you look at the, the winner of each season and what they did the season prior, none of them have made it past the second round the year before that they won their championship. Granted, you can take Kevin Harvick out because 14 was the very first year uh, of this format. So what he did in 2013 is kind of irrelevant because it wasn't a playoff format. But Kyle Busch, uh, he won the title in 2015. But the year before, he was bounced in the second round. Jimmy Johnson, when he won in 16, in 2015, he was bounced in the first round. And then Truex won in 2017. Well, what he what did he do in 26, 2016? He was bounced in the second round. The year prior, he didn't even make the playoffs. So now you look at, you take all those stats and you throw it in and look at the drivers this year. Uh, only two drivers uh, didn't make it past the second round last year. And those two, Ryan Blaney, Denny Hamlin. So, I, or, yeah, or Ryan Blaney, Denny Hamlin, and uh, Kyle Larson. Those are three. I'm sorry. So those three would make a good nucleus to get to Homestead because stats say they could get there. Um, but, but, but I went yeah, with Larson. Yeah, you went with Larson over Blaney is really the, the, the one out of the box one. And the only reason... Yeah, and the only reason I did that was because of the, the Ganassi trend, because they haven't won yet. So they go for six straight years, six straight different winners by right. six straight different teams. But you got Hamlin. Uh, he hasn't won either, so you could technically have six straight years, six straight winners, but five different teams. Um, plus, I want Hamlin as my champion for obvious uh, reasons. Two of the last three uh, race winners at Martinsville in this playoff race, they've gone on to win the championship that season. So... Hamlin's my pick to win this weekend, so I'm going to ride that trend too and say he's going to win the title uh, next month yeah, at Homestead. And, and I agree, and, and, and we felt pretty strong about Denny Hamlin uh, about, what, four weeks ago, give or take, when uh, he had won his – he had that stretch of, what, six straight top fives, runner-up, two wins, mm -hmm. and uh, it's interesting because he kind of – he's been a little bit quiet since then. Uh and, and it took the win for everybody to kind of reopen their eyes to Denny Hamlin again. Uh, oh, yeah, Denny Hamlin. You know, this, is, uh, this could be his year. It's like, well, yeah, it's like everybody kind of got quiet about that for the last few weeks. So, yeah, mm -hmm. he, this, 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 this should be. If Denny Hamlin is ever going to win a championship, this has got to be the year. This is the year. the year. Yep. Yep. I don't think he's ever going to win if he doesn't win it this year. No, it's just like that that year that uh, like my Colts, Peyton Manning, it seemed like they could never get by the Patriots, and the year they did, it was like it didn't matter who they were playing on the NFC. They they finally got over that hump, and they were going to win. That's kind of why I feel like Denny Hamlin's doing right now. He's slaying all those past dragons. I mean, he we used to see it time and time again. He had good years. He'd get in the playoffs, and he'd see Rex or uh, how many pit oh, road yeah. speeding penalties. That hasn't happened have. in a while. And you don't hear yeah, about that no, anymore. That's right. Yeah, he, he just – he seems focused, so it just feels like the stars are aligning for a Denny Hamlin championship. This just seems like a good track for him this weekend. And we talked about this going to the playoffs, getting right. hot at the right time. Logano did that last year. Hamlin did that going into the playoffs. I mean, your, your Washington Nationals, same with Aang. They They got hot going into the postseason. Was it nine straight wins to end the regular season or something crazy like that? And here they are in the World Series. So it, it – Hamlin's that that equivalent, and, and I just think just the odds are aligning for him. And like I said, the the trends. Granted, he drives for a team that has won the last uh, since 2014, but he also hasn't won a title himself to keep it six straight years with six straight different drivers. It's just it feels okay. like that's the only thing he's missing. He's got Daytona oh, 500s, Southern 500s, Bristol Night Race. It just he's missing the championship, and this this would make him. Uh, to me, I think he's a Hall of Famer right now, but that for sure would put him in that. Uh, that realm with all those other Before drivers. Before I let you go, Eric, uh, as far as any of the other deep sleepers, because this is a bad race for deep uh, for deep sleepers, The once you get past Blaney and maybe even Harvick, uh, then there's a big drop-off. I was thinking about Clint Boyer because he's been pretty solid here lately with four top tens last five. He won the race last year. Uh, he was seventh in March, 25-1. to one. Uh but I I went with Suarez at sixty six to one. I just kind of liked the way uh, that 
He's been racing recently. I know the results haven't been there the last couple of weeks. Really, the results haven't been there uh, for most of the season, but he just seems to be, at least early on in some of these races, he seems to be kind of getting close. Uh, and he does have back-to-back top tens at this track. I don't think anybody's got a chance, by the way, once you get past the favorites and maybe Blaney or Harvick. Yeah. Uh, it's pot luck after that, but... Fantasy wise, I think Suarez has a chance to have a good race. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. I, I think you got to look at the the guys from Penske, Gibbs, or Stewart. Just in general, um, not in the top ten finishers in the sprint race. They all belong to them. Uh, it just seems like those are the top teams at Martinsville. I believe Penske and Gibbs uh, have combined to win the last five races, and uh, five of the last six, or something crazy like that at Martinsville. They're they're right there. Uh, Chase Elliott's the only non Penske or Gibbs uh, driver in the top 10 this past spring race. Spring race, the Hendricks best driver there. But you also can't throw out Jimmy Johnson, just he's running much better, it seems, recently. He's got a lot of speed in his car. Uh, Martinsville was his playground for years. Um, yeah. But I just, I don't, for, he'd be a good fantasy play. But like you said, it's going to be hard for a, a non playoff driver to contend for the win just because. Those guys want to win. The playoff guys want to win just to have an easy next two weeks. They could get the homestead. But the non-playoff guys, you don't want to take out a, a playoff driver. You don't want to race them hard and spin them or wreck them and ruin their day and ruin their championship. It seems like you race them differently. And with Martinsville being a short track and you, there's bumping and banging, a lot of times you just see the non-playoff guys just let them go. It's just like, why battle? I don't want to wreck them. Uh, especially if it's a teammate. I mean, you got to look at these guys left. They got a lot of teammates still in play. Like, I can't see Kozlowski getting in the way of Logano or Blaney. Uh, I can't see Jimmy Johnson or Bowman or uh, Byron getting in the way of Chase Elliott sure, or Kyle sure. Larson. Yeah. So, I, I just, it's going to be hard. But I would say, like you said, Suarez, maybe an Eric Jones, just because Gibbs is really strong there. Maybe he could go off strategy and steal a win. Uh, I look, I think Jimmy Johnson, even Johnson. like you were saying, because he has what 11th or better in five of his last six races. The mm-hmm. one was Talladega that he didn't have a top 11. So that that doesn't that don't, that doesn't count. So, yeah, I mean, why not Jimmy Johnson? He's, he's racing the best that he's raced all year. Maybe the best yep. he's raced in a couple of years. He, he hasn't had a lot of top fives. He's not finishing off. But there's a guy with nine wins at the track. And I would also probably throw in, for the same sake, someone like Ryan Newman, mm-hmm. just because he's a wily veteran like Johnson, and he's had his moments over the last uh, few months. Yeah, because this is uh, and a good, this is a good race to bet because, as we talked, it's it seems like the winner is going to come from one of the eight playoff drivers. But we also talked there's some playoff drivers that have struggled at Martinsville that you can kind of eliminate. As far as like, are they really going to win or do I need to throw my money towards a couple favorites and go with some long shots and knowing that the couple favorites, you're probably going to have a winner out of there. And then a long shot, if some of them, one of them somehow steals a win and you got them, you've made a lot of money. Whereas like you said, like a Jimmy Johnson, Boyer, uh, Eric Jones, somebody like that, Daniel Suarez, you could throw because they're, they've got longer odds. You can throw less money at them and still win some good money and throw a couple, uh, some, your most money on a couple favorites and come out of there feeling pretty good. Cause yeah, out of the eight drivers, I think you can cut it in half with who you really should feel good uh, about. That's going to win Sunday's race. All right, Eric sounds good. Appreciate it. Uh, what are you going to be doing for race review online.com? Yeah, we'll have a, a practice report uh, Saturday. It's kind of a weird uh, schedule this weekend. They've got two practices on Saturday morning. And then they're going to have the truck race, and then they'll qualify Saturday afternoon. And and we know that Martinsville qualifying is more important, so uh, we'll see where that shakes out. But uh, NASCAR also has done a really good job of giving 5 lap, 10 lap, 15 lap, 20 lap, all those averages. So single lap speed, not going to focus on a whole lot over what are the speed charts look like on the first two practices. I'm going to focus on long runs and who's starting where and kind of formulate that on the uh, one big report for uh, Saturday, and I'll have the favorites listed in that. Excellent. Eric, appreciate it. Uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. Enjoy the race. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.